Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jason. I'm the pastor of Story Church. Welcome to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we're so glad that you have found us uh, and that you're uh, checking us out or, or you're catching up on the sermon uh, from this past Sunday. Uh, I'm at the Mebane Historical Museum. This is where we meet uh, every, every Sunday. Um, and it's a great space. And every time we gather here, I say thank you for bringing the body of Christ to this place. And, and, and I, I want to express to you, thank you for bringing the body of Christ to wherever you are, whether you're on a walk, uh, listening to us, or uh, you're at home, uh, maybe with your kids. Uh, our hope and, and our earnest prayer is that the sermons that you hear, uh, whether you listen to just a segment of that sermon or you listen to the whole thing um, would be meaningful to you and that you walk away um, feeling like the time that you spent with us, that you are better for it. And so we just want to say that we're grateful for you. Um, if you would love to, to check out our community or experience our community, uh, of course, listening is, is a great way uh, to do that. Uh, but another great way is to come and join us on Sundays. Like I said, we meet in the Mebane Historical Museum in this space, one of these chairs uh, could be yours. Uh, and so you can come and be a part of us that way. We meet every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and we hope to meet you soon. Well, happy Sunday, everyone. Um, I hope everyone is doing uh, really well today. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 118 uh, this morning, a traditional passage uh, that we read on Palm Sunday. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, is what the psalmist proclaims. Um, I want to imagine, like, and you can do this, like, pause the video for 30 seconds and try to do nothing else for that 30 seconds except just to be still. And when you come back, um, after that pause, we'll say, okay, we're back. Um, if you manage to, to take that 30 seconds to really pause um, and not to... Um, scroll social media or check your email like you really paused what you might have found is that you were daydreaming uh, you were thinking about a loved one in your in your daydream you're thinking about the past you're thinking about something you said you're like maybe i shouldn't have said that way you're trying to recreate the past past again uh, or we're thinking about to-do list what do i need to do this afternoon what is for dinner uh, what is the future we're trying to create the future in our in our head or how long the sermon will be uh, because we're always, in some ways, daydreaming about the past or daydreaming about the future. Human beings uh, spend an average of 25 to 50% of each day that they are awake daydreaming. Just how crazy is, is that? And if you manage to watch this whole video, you will probably spend 50% of that thinking about other things. Being present in the moment, like this is the day the Lord has made, is particularly hard for human beings. Uh, much of our anxiety and worry are rooted in the inability to, to control our future. We are worried about outcomes that are out of our control. I recently uh, finished a book called The Sweet Spot about meaning and happiness. And the author talked about how we as humans are constantly looking at the past and trying to shape the future. Um, and we tend to knock on human beings for that, that we're so daydreaming, that we're always escaping. Um, but the author says, you know, that's kind of what makes us distinctly human, is our ability to think about the past. 
especially like way back in the past, the, the ability to keep a history of like what happened hundreds of years ago, no creature is able to do that. And it makes us distinctly human. So I guess in a positive light, being anxious and worried and, and, and daydreaming is, is, a, is a human anomaly. I think of these words of Jesus, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Look at the birds of the air. Um, this is a difficult task when comparing yourself to another animal species. Um, because birds don't worry about what they wear, where they will sleep, or where, where they will eat. Like most animals, most creation is just present in the day to day. And the invitation Psalm 118 is to jettison us back to the present. The psalmist proclaims as it comes and it culminates into the song, let everything that has breath, let every creature that breathes praise the Lord. Holy worship is not just about human proclamation. It is an invitation for humans to join all of creation. In a sense, for a moment to allow our distinctive humanity to join the rest of the creation in being present. Being present is a um, difficult task. This is the day the Lord has made. When we think of some of the moments of our lives, uh, we probably might not call those lot moments sacred or holy moments or moments for which that was the day the Lord has, has made. Traumatic moments, moments that we wish we could forget. And what we recognize in this present moment and all the ways we have arrived, um, that most of us have not arrived without harm. Some of our narratives have our narratives of great harm that has been done to us. This verse is not a proclamation that the Lord caused those moments of harm or that those moments of harm are holy and sacred moments. But it is a reality that in this present moment, those stories make up who we are. The scars and the wounds that have got us to this point have shaped and molded our narrative. And to be present is to accept your wounds and your scars, the pain that we all carry, all the things that make you, and to face them with courage. The Psalms is a liturgical prayer book that we carry with us. And this particular Psalm um, would have been used at the beginning of a gathering. Um, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And then the leader asks the people to respond. His steadfast love endures forever. The call to worship that we practice as well in our worship gatherings carries this heavy why behind why we are here and what we are to do. It also recognizes that we might have come into this space beaten up by the world and that we will allow this narrative of God to enfold us. Give thanks to the Lord. His steadfast love endures forever. Um, the Hebrew word for steadfast love is hesed, and it's found over 240 times in the Old Testament, which just means it's an important and significant word. It's also a challenging word uh, to translate. Walter Brueggemann has so far been my favorite translation of this word has said. Tenacious solidarity, 
God is tenacious. The divine has a firm hold on creation and is one that is persistent. And solidarity means unity and feeling. God is a God who walks in our story, shows up, and holds our stories. This is the day the Lord has made. The Lord is the one who walks with us in our stories. We as human beings have to carry the courage to show up and be seen. Our courage for us as a community, for the Story Church community, is one of our core values. And when you establish core values as a community, as you, as you live and you grow, you kind of discover what the, the wealth and the depth of these beautiful words. And one of the ways that courage shows up in our lives, and it's to, it is in this way, courage is to allow ourselves to be seen by the divine and one another. The invitation that the Psalms give, gives us, this is the day the Lord has made, let us Rejoice, let us give thanks and be glad in it. The, the invitation is to respond with gratitude. Brene Brown, uh, which was a fa favorite author of mine, says this, To become fully human means learning to turn my gratitude for being in alive into some concrete common good. It means growing gentler toward human weakness it means practicing forgiveness of my and everyone else's hourly failures to live up to divine standards. It means learning to forget myself on a regular basis in order to attend to the other selves in my vicinity. It means living so that I am only human does not become an excuse for anything. It means receiving the human condition as blessing, not a curse, and all its achingly frail and redemptive reality. I love this um, uh, it means practicing forgiveness of my and everyone else's hourly failures to live up to divine standards and to respond. Our lives are a response of gratitude. And she says the pathway to joy, a joyous life, is the ability to be present, to show up, not escape, and to practice gratitude. We spend most of our time. Let's just uh, let's just be real. You're still in. You're you're still here. Welcome. I'm so glad you're still here. Um, but most of our time, let's face it, is spent complaining about people. <laughs> um, I believe that there is a place for complaining about people. We need to vent, but venting is not the pathway to joy. <laughs> Uh, we might feel good for that moment after complaining, but it will not lead us to joy. Gratitude is the antidote. What if in some of the moments I don't complain about somebody, but I instead I recognize my own frailty and in, in my own humanity, and I also... I uh, spend that time celebrating the unique creation of someone else's humanity. What if I affirm what is good in them? Or what if I affirm what is good in my day? Not in all the things that did not go right, but in all the things that did. And speaking good into being. This has to be a practice, uh, a discipline. This is not something you hear the sermon, you're like, all right, I'm gonna do that. Um, Brene Brown gives a couple of spiritual gratitude practices. Um, if maybe saying a prayer around the table, you know, giving thanks is awkward, or just never, or it's just kind of like, never seems that meaningful, what about saying what you're grateful for? And going around the table each day, Name one thing that you're grateful for and to make that a spiritual practice. What about journaling? If you journal or not, um, you need a, a low goal to make. What about naming one or two things each day uh, that you're grateful for? What about going old-fashioned, writing someone an old-fashioned note? 
maybe even somebody you've complained about recently, just how grateful you are for them, an email, Facebook message, whatever your, your, your pathway might be. And as you go forth from this video onto your day, um, what are you thankful for? What is it that you are grateful for? Sure, there is uh, a myriad of things to be not grateful for. In Genesis, uh, God, when he created humanity, he saw that it was good. He named that it was good. What is good that you celebrate? My hope and prayer that our time together in these words, uh, in this psalm might go with you and that it might carry meaning uh, in your life. Go now on a God that goes with us. Amen.